After a very quiet and peaceful night's sleep, I carried on up the Ashby Canal. Just south of Hinkley, near Bridge 15, is a water tap, so I took the opportunity to fill up my tanks. So now I've filled up with water, I'm heading through the um, sort of western side of Hinkley. Lots and lots of moored up boats along here. At Nuts Bridge, it was a bit of a gamble which way to turn, left or right. Luckily, I was able to find my location on the map and make the left turning. To the right, there's a cluster of boats moored up in Hinkley Wharf. Winding my way through the built-up areas, it was a bit of a contrast to what I've been used to. I wanted to get some lunch on the strait between Bridge 17 and Trinity Marina, but every mooring spot was taken. In my last video, I discussed about the four sources of energy. I failed to mention the fifth, which is wind power. A number of people have got wind turbines either on the roof that go round or they've got ones that go round like that. that. As you leave the built-up area of the town, to the eastern side there is the head office of Triumph Motorcycles. They're the largest British motorcycle manufacturer and last year saw profits rocket with a turnover of nearly £500 million. The Ashby Canal is great if you're new to canals. It's quite a short canal at 22 miles long, has no locks and can easily cope with boats up to 72 foot in length and 7 foot in width. At Stoke Golding there are a cluster of red boats to navigate through. This is the home of Ashby Boats Company, which are popular for holiday and day trip hires. These new raised areas for mooring are a great idea, and each section had mooring rings and gravel to reduce mud being taken into the boat. Well done Canal and River Trust, for them! Even though there were ample mooring spaces at the popular area between bridges 27 and 28, I was in seek of a more quieter rural location, ready for the cold night ahead. Lovely sunny day again today, very cold last night, um, I think it got down to about minus 3 or minus 4 degrees Celsius. That was outside mind you, because inside it was boiling. I lit the fire and as usual I put a little tiny few more coals on than I should have and it got so warm I was in my t-shirt and, ed and shorts editing and I had to open a load of windows and doors and Molly resorted to lying on the cold tiles in the bathroom. But anyway, um, I'm moving on further north up the Ashby Canal today. Um, it was so cold outside that there's a slight ice on the top of the canal, about three or four millimetres I'd say, not much. Certainly not enough to do any damage to a hull or do any damage to the paint on the hull but it's got a certain crunch and a certain crisp and crunched sound as you, as you navigate through it.
actually the first time I've navigated with ice that's this thick. Um, I'm just taking my time going slow past other boats. Um, the boats to watch out for are the fiberglass boats. I think this ice is fine, but if it was any thicker, I wouldn't navigate because there's a, a risk of a sheet of ice puncturing the side of the fiberglass boat. But there's lots of movement around the boats up ahead, so I think it should be okay. However, the further I travelled, the thicker the ice became. At one point, I had to reverse just to get around the corner, as the ice seemed to dictate which direction I should travel. So, I moored up. I'm up at Sutton Wharf now, and there's a turning circle here, and I've emptied my bins and filled my water and all that sort of stuff. Now, the, when I set off, the ice was quite thin. Um, but as I sort of ventured out, especially into areas where there were lots of trees covering the canal, it got really quite thick, sort of five to eight millimetres. Now I went really, really slowly past other boats, but it's not fair on boaters that um, are in side boats because it makes a hell of a racket going past. Plus, I didn't want to scrape all the paint off my hull. After a spot of breakfast at the cafe here, it was time for a molly walk to a rather significant battlefield. <laughs> 